a train coming through here? I think so. We're going to have a little funeral service for the All right, everybody. We're going to start, so let's come on in. And uh, um, I know we're a fellowship in a bunch of people, and that's always good. But let's come on in and let's focus our attention on God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I was reflecting on, uh, on what God has done for us and just want to remind you that everything God has done for us is, is over the top. Amen. Hallelujah. Nothing he does is, is a partial job. He didn't just die so that we can just have enough. Uh, he didn't just die. He didn't die so we would have, uh, you know, just the status quo. He Amen. came that we might have life and life more abundantly. Amen. Amen. We're going to talk about it more later in the time of in the Word of God this morning. But this morning we're going to worship the Lord. We're going to lift Him up. Amen. And so please join with us as we go to prayer and then sing. The songs will be on the overhead. So sing along, Hallelujah, and, and uh, worship God. Father, we love you so much. We're so grateful. We thank you for your presence here today, that you are the healing God, you are the saving God, you are the delivering God, that there is nothing too hard for you. And this morning, if we'll just reach out by faith, we can have whatever we need. And not just enough, but over the top, more than we can even ask or, or, or dream of. And we believe that of you, Father, because you are good, your mercy endures forever. And we bless and praise you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
praise God forever. Amen? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm reminded, and the Bible talks about, in the great psalm, talks about praise Him with your voices, praise Him with cymbals, praise Him with stringed instruments, praise Him with everything you got. Amen? And uh, let all that have breath praise the Lord. Glory to God. And I just, uh, you know, we're, we, we feel so inadequate at times when all we do is rely on printed page. Amen? It's just songs. And we sing them and, and thank God and, and we enjoy them and they honor God and they bless God's people. But sometimes we just have to uh, move away from it, beyond these things, and express your heart before God. Amen? He, he uh, wants us to worship him in, in spirit and in truth. And, and not be always confined to, you know, this plane. And uh, so I'm just going to take a moment and, and just let's worship the Lord. Let's lift our voices. Hallelujah. I, I just got to, I mean, I just got a shout building up inside of me. Um, I, I want to, I just want to release it unto God. Amen. As a, as a praise, as a, as a, uh, as a, an anointed uh, uh, purpose sent out to break yokes, to destroy burdens off of people's lives. And uh, so, Father, we thank you for your, your ear, and we thank you that, Lord, that we can, that we can uh, touch your heart in, in ways that, uh, that nothing in all creation can, like your sons and your daughters who desire to worship you in spirit and truth. So we bless you and thank you. And we thank you, praise you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Just so that I can explain for you a little bit of what I believe God was showing me and helping me to see so that you could hear it and see it as well, is um, we were doing that song, all the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing, great are you, Lord, amen. And I just felt something rising up inside of me, and, but if you, if you saw and listened, I couldn't, I couldn't do it, I couldn't find it, I couldn't, I couldn't bring it, are you with me? Because what I heard inside of my heart was a, a not a scream, but um, 
but a shout of praise. And it went from that C chord and it went escalated. And I can see it, I can hear it inside my heart, right? But I couldn't present it, I couldn't do it. I couldn't reach the note, couldn't find it, amen? And it was interesting because I felt a little bit like I fell short of what God was desiring of me, amen? But then we went and sang, um, Good, Good Father. And uh, that verse that says, love so undeniable, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable, I can hardly think. Amen? And the Spirit of God is showing me, it's not about your ability. You reaching the note, or you presenting something out of your flesh, so to speak. But it's about something out of your hearts. And even though I couldn't present it, amen, I presented it. Are you with me? And so move beyond what we can think all the time, what our reason, move beyond it. And, and uh, he gave us so many gifts, talents, and abilities, amen? And one of them, the most, one of the most marvelous ones is the Holy Spirit, who searches our hearts and he prays through us, perfect prayer. And it may not be necessarily long and lengthy. It may not be eloquent and flowing. It might be one word. It might be just something not even spoken. Amen? Something you see and you just release it. Amen? We, we have to learn, brothers and sisters. We've got, to, we've got to learn how to move in the Spirit, how to flow in the Spirit. And, um, and sometimes we have to move... Put the natural aside and and just do things by faith amen so i'm so grateful for that and and then again it, it just uh blessed me so much when we talk about that as you call me deeper still aren't you glad he's calling you deeper aren't you glad he's calling you deeper amen to know him the apostle paul said it better than i ever could he says you know life the whole purpose of life is to know him and the power of his resurrection, what his resurrection means and what it has brought to my life. Amen? Hallelujah. That we have resurrection power living on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. You with me, my brothers and sisters? You, so appreciate you. Hallelujah. And uh, it's always my endeavor to help you to understand. I, I um, was so grateful for um, when I was a student at Rama. I saw some things of the Spirit, by the Spirit of God, and of the Spirit of God that transcended my ability to understand. I, I didn't know what in the world, you know? I, I came out of a denomination, and we didn't have moves of the Spirit, and um, we didn't even really talk about the Holy Spirit much, except, you know, to recite certain prayers that included Him. But uh, to know uh, Jesus as my personal Savior and Lord, to know the Holy Spirit, amen, as my teacher, as my guide, as my comforter, as my, as my, uh, my standby, my strengthener, amen, my equipper, uh, I didn't know. And uh, so I'm glad and I'm very thankful for learning these things, amen. And um, my uh, greatest blessing, as I said, was Brother Hagin used to move in the things of the Spirit and he'd call other people to, and they would move in the spirit and, 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 and things that would be accomplished. And I'd, I'd be watching and I'd be looking like, this is cool. I knew in my heart this was good. It was right, but I couldn't figure out what it was. And he was always faithful. Never missed the opportunity to bring us to the word of God, to show us exactly this is that. Amen. Let me show you, it's, it's, it's in the Bible. It's, this, is, this is what God desires, amen? And it's pleasing to him. And so I always remembered that and was grateful for it. So I always endeavor to uh, do that for you, to show you and help you to see that, um, that it is uh, God's word and it is God's will for us to move out into the things of the Spirit of God, amen? Uh, I, I alluded to this verse, to this uh, chapter earlier in the worship. I just want to give it to you so you have it. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalm 150 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. 
Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. And sometimes, you know, whether or not you play an instrument, you might be a drummer, you might be a, a guitarist or a psaltery or a harpist, or, or you might have uh, the ability to play the trumpet, okay? But there are times where nothing else will do but you. That you present yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. Because we fit in that category. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for your faithfulness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you take just a moment and take a look in our bulletins this morning. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day to our Heavenly Father and to you fathers that are here represented and to those of you that are watching Facebook and YouTube. Hallelujah. This is a day that we have set aside to honor fathers. And um, we are, are, you know, it becomes a, a time of party and uh, celebration and good food and family gatherings, and barbecues and things like that. And uh, it's marvelous. But uh, never forget that it is a God-given um, blessing to be a father. Amen. And uh, to take it uh, seriously and always take it seriously. You are number one role model to your children. You are the number one person to your wife. Um, you are there to protect and to guard and to provide. Amen. And to give your life. Hallelujah. A father's job is not to be served. A father's job is to serve and to give their lives. That's all there is to it. Our, 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 our example, our role model is God. Amen. He, uh, he, he is, is a giving God. He's a merciful God. He's a forgiving God. He's a patient God. And we, can, we fathers could learn of him how we must uh, become more patient. We must become more merciful. And we must, um, he, he, he listens. We, we have to listen. Amen. And, and not only do we say we love, we must show our love um, through our lives. Hallelujah. And it is a life of sacrifice. It is a life of, of, um, of, uh, of, uh, of blessing. Amen. Everywhere we go. And, and you moms, don't, don't be overlooked because it's you too. Amen. It just happens to be Father's Day. So uh, let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 6. So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Amen. That's so good. So good. Amen. And then there's a quote here. We are anchored in hope and that hope has a name, Jesus. He is the secure and steadfast anchor of our souls. As we place our complete trust in him, we will follow as he leads, not only securing ourselves to him as our anchor, but we also become a vessel through which the Holy Spirit will work to impact our territories. Amen. To impact the world in which we live. Hallelujah. Praise God, that's wonderful, that's amazing. Hold on to these, you know, there is a place on the back for notes. You can keep these, you can read back over these, these quotes. It will build you up, it will encourage you, amen. Uh, 9.30 on Monday mornings, Miss Karen is here at the church to pray. If you ever have the time and would like to come and join her, uh, you can come on Wednesday night. We have our hour of power right here in the church at seven o'clock and then on, on Friday nights our teenagers gather so uh, and, and uh, Pastor Nick brings the, the word of God to them amen and we appreciate uh, him hallelujah and everything he does for the for the Lord and for the church amen hallelujah um, we uh, um, are planning we're not sure exactly when to have a brunch um, and we'll let you know as soon as we know 
And again, on the bottom, please check out our website, www.fwlf.com. Uh, there's a lot of things there to bless you, to encourage you, to teach you. And um, as we'll talk about in the time of the Word of God, you can refer people to our website uh, because it has a lot of aids, a lot of helpful things that are presented there, and also gives them a little bit of a, uh, an invitation to come and uh, to taste and see how good the Lord is. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. At this time, let's receive our morning offering as God has continued to pour out blessings on our lives. Let us be faithful, amen, to present our tithes and our offerings before the Lord. It is pleasing in His sight, and it is His number one way to assure that our futures are, are provided for. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, this is gardening time. As you get your offering ready, checks are written to Faith with Love Fellowship. If you're giving online, go to our website, www.fwlf.com, and you can give some code through a ministry called Tidely there, or you can mail a, a, a check in through our um, through the mail, and uh, the, the, the information is on the website. It's also on the back of the bulletins. Uh, but anyway, you know, this is gardening time. And uh, can you, uh, when, when Miss Karen, who loves to garden, by the way, you all know that, um, when she uh, decided that she wanted to begin to plant, uh, for what reason? Why do we plant? Is there a reason why we plant? For harvest, right? And um, so when she decided that she was going to plant for harvest, she asked me to turn over the raised bed. Uh, I built her a raised bed, pretty nice size. Anyway, um, so I went out there with my shovel and I dug down about this deep and I was pulling up all the roots that I could possibly find. And then uh, she bought her vegetables and all whatever she was gonna put in there and uh, she asked me, uh, can you dig a hole here? And I wanna put this here, this here. So I dug a hole, but I dug deeper than I went to turn it over. And when I went deeper, what did I found? A tangle of white weeds. There's these, uh, these weeds that are you know, invasive, they uh, come up as a vine, they have a little white flower on it, and they grow on everything. And they'll grow on your tomatoes, they'll grow on your, your, your potatoes, or they'll grow on your flowers, they'll grow up your fences, they grow everywhere. And they're very hard to get rid of because they, they send these tendrils under the ground, and they're about this deep under the ground, and even deeper. So long story short, so I went after it, and together, we, um, we dug up and filled a wheelbarrow with weeds, those weeds. And when you look at the grass, I mean, the top of the soil, I mean, I turned it over this much, it looked perfect, but those things were there and you start planting. And so we went after it, we dug them all out. Are you with me? And, uh, and then she started to plant. And if I, you know, Pastor Nick, why do you do all that work? Because of the joy it brings her to see her vegetables growing. And then the vegetables are not only for us to enjoy, she loves to give, amen, and to be a blessing to others as well. So, and she loves, and she's a wonderful photographer. She takes pictures of the flowers, and I'm amazed at the flowers. But how many know there's work involved? But why do we do the work? Because we enjoy the harvest, hallelujah. So this is the same kind of an idea that why do we, why do we um, give? so that we can enjoy the harvest. Why do we sow? Why do we dig up the ground? If there's something in us that says, you know what, I, I don't really know if I wanna give this week because I, I could use this money here or I could use that money there or, or whatever, or you know, I've given a lot of money to the church and I think I've given more than I, my, I should. You know what you hit? You've hit the weed bed. Yeah, and if you just forget about it, that those weeds will come up and choke your harvest. And, and you're not, it's just not going to produce. And, 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 and you know, just another example, I'm, I'm diligent. I'm, I'm kind of one of those who's focused. So I go outside almost every day and, I, and I'm looking for them things. It's you, again, you against me, you know? And I'm pulling them before they get too long because they come up. And they come up in rock beds. They come up in everything. And, and you have to, and how many know it's the same thing with the word of God that you sow into your heart? You got to be careful of the, of the weeds. So you got to prepare the ground. And the same thing in giving. 
You have to make sure that you water that seed. Amen. Lord, I thank you that my seed is, is, is growing. It is, it is ripening. It's going to grow to maturity. And I will receive a marvelous harvest. Amen. Uh, of, of what I have sown. Whether it's finances, whether it's uh, kindness, whether it's, um, it's the word of God into another person's life so that they might get saved. Uh, prayers so that somebody might get healed. Amen. Whatever it is, you sow and you, you pursue and you continue, even if it's hard, because your eyes are set on a harvest. Amen. 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 Uh, am, I am I telling you right? Amen. Yeah. Miss Karen shared this a couple of years ago. I never forgot. When Jesus was on the cross, you were on his mind. So the Bible says he endured. Amen. For the joy set before him. And the joy set before him was, of course, number one, honoring his father. But number two was seeing people saved. That's called harvest. Amen? Amen? And so he was willing. And, and, and it's true. Think about it. He, he not only, you know, uh, died, but he was buried. How do you get a harvest? You take a seed and you bury it. Amen? And then lo and behold, the amazing part of regeneration and how God set it up, everything bears fruit after its kind. It breaks the soil, it begins to grow, and then if it's fruit bearing, it bears fruit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, you, have, you ready? Yes. Let's uh, sow. Hallelujah. And um, if, if, if um, Miss Karen didn't plant any, any seeds or any vegetables or any flowers, can you expect to have a harvest? No. Yeah, how many of it comes down to choices? If I didn't weed it like she asked me to, that whole garden would be ruined because those weeds would start to grow up and choke everything. If I wasn't diligent to keep them off of her lilies and some of her other beautiful flowers that are gorgeous and breathtaking, they would grow up them and choke them and pull them to the ground and suck all the energy out of the ground and, and kill, that thing would never bear fruit. We have some lilies around the pool area that she's planted that are so amazingly fragrant. I tell you, I walk by them and I, I feel like heaven's gonna smell. This is how heaven's gonna smell, amazing smell. So I'm out there, amen, pulling them weeds because I don't want anything to stop those lilies from blossoming and releasing their fragrance into the air. Amen? How many know I'm not talking about flowers, I'm not talking about vegetables. We do what we do so that people can release their praises to God, amen? People who are bound, people who are oppressed, people who don't know that Jesus is good, that he's their savior, and we are here, amen, to help them to release their praises unto God. So we gotta work on it, we gotta pray, we gotta give, we gotta sow, we gotta, we gotta you know, pre preach, speak, you with me, my brothers and sisters? Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, I just give you examples that I can to illustrate spiritual points. And, and those are the things that really matter. Amen? So would you help me? Come on. Let's lift our hands. Lift our offering before the Lord. Let's uh, So this is my seed. I sow it into the kingdom of God. I sow because I love God and want to see faith with love fellowship continue to fulfill what God has called us to do. I believe that as I sow my seed, it shall be given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It shall come back to me in many ways. I thank you, Lord, for good opportunities coming my way. I thank you that the windows of heaven are open because of my obedience to sow my seed. I thank you, Lord, for the favor of God upon my life and the grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much for your faithfulness and for your giving. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. Amen. Father, we thank you so much that you set this in motion. 
that if we would give in any area that honors you and helps people, that you will watch over your word to perform it, that we will receive good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We thank you. We receive it. We bless you for it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want to keep you too long, but I have to obey God. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Kemp. She's going to take care of um, our children's ministry. You know, how many know it works both ways? Amen? This might hurt, I'm going to warn you, but it's the truth. Remember we sang in the song, You Are Perfect in All Your Ways? How many know he is? He's perfect in all of his ways. So if you give things that please him and help people, he's watching over his word to give back to you, good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. But how many know he's perfect in all of his ways? So if you give the wrong stuff, he must make sure that he's given back to you, good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over. Ouch. But take hold of it. Amen? Because he's perfect in all of his ways. And so make sure, it's part of the fear of God, make sure that you're not sowing to the flesh or sowing to, you know, anger and spite and, 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 and division and, and all this other stuff. Be careful. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, don't let the topic of conversation in your, in your house be, you know, we're, we're not going to make it, we don't have enough, I don't know where it's going to come from and all these other things. Don't do that because you're giving. You don't realize you are, but you're selling. And you don't want to harvest on that, do you? Does anybody want to harvest on that? So be careful of what you sow. Be careful of what you plant. Words, attitudes, the very motivation of our heart actions, even thoughts. I mean, come on, my brothers and sisters, write it down. I got a whole other message ready to go, but I have to obey the Spirit of God when He prompts me. Amen? I will not, you know, ignore Him when He prompts me. Hallelujah. So, um, He's perfect in all of His ways. So, make sure when you give, you give to honor God and to bless His people. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you for the fact that you're a good father. You're a wonderful father. And we are so grateful. And, and, and part of a father's role, too, is discipline. And uh, to give us a, a, a path to go. To warn us of, uh, of disobedience. And to um, encourage and bless us for obedience. And you're a good father. And we're so grateful, we're so thankful. Hallelujah. We uh, ask you to bless the time that we have together here in the Word of God. And bless your people always in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Well, this morning I want to talk about helping people to life. That's what we're talking about, harvest. We're talking about the harvest. Amen. But I have to lay a foundation. It's not long. But there's a word in the Bible called zoe. Z-O-E. And um, I was thinking about this. I'm going to try to find it. But this is a song we used to sing. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. It might be so old that none of you might know it. But maybe Nick and Joe, because they've heard it before. Maybe all of you. But I've got the life of God in me. I've got the life of God in me. I have his life, his nature, and his ability. I've got the life of God in me. And then you can fill that blank with everything. I've got the love of God in me. I've got the peace of God in me. I've got the joy of God in me. And you know, it'll help you to realize what God has deposited in you. He's deposited himself in you. Amen? So Zoe, in John chapter 5, that's where our, our scripture will take us. We're going to share some scriptures from John's gospel. Um, John chapter 5 and verse 26. John chapter 5, verse 26 says, For as the Father hath life in himself, 
so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. For as the Father hath life, and it's that word zoe, in himself. Amen? It didn't come from someplace else. God is life. He is love. He is peace. He is joy. He doesn't manufacture it, and it doesn't come from another place. He is the source of these things, and they come up out of him. It's who he is. Amen? And uh, so, for as the Father hath life, Zoe, in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life, Zoe, in himself. The Greek word translated life in our text today is Zoe. Reading through the King James Version or any English translation, when you see the word life, you might think it's always talking about the same thing, but it isn't. In the Bible, when you talk about love, the Greek, there are three different loves. There's agape, which is the God kind of love, selfless love. Amen? That's the kind of love that's been shed abroad in your heart. You're, you're, you're capable of, of releasing that kind of love. Amen? But there's also phileo, which is brotherly love. And then there's eros, which is sexual love. You with me? So there's three kinds of love. And we can operate in all three of them. Amen? And it's right that we do so. But you don't love your, your neighbors the same way you love your husband or your wife. Amen? You love them, but it's more of a phileo. That's why Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. That's where it comes from. Phileo. And, and uh, that is how we're supposed to love, you know, uh, people. And, but we're not limited to that. And then there, of course, is eros, which is very, very specific towards, you know, uh, intimacy. But then there's agape, and we've been called to live in that. Amen? Because the other two are beneath that. But God has called us to live in that. In our personal life, in our marriage, and in our interpersonal relationships. It's that love that's been shed abroad in our hearts. So we have the ability to love people with that kind of love. Well, the very same way, it's, it's, there are three other Greek words in the New Testament are translated as life. Briefly, these words and their meanings are S-P-S-U-C-H-E, such, suche, maybe, and it means natural life or human life. Bios means manner of life. And then anastrophe means behavior. So we have natural human life, we have manner of life, and we have behavior. Zoe, now, means eternal life or God's life. The other three are of this earth. Amen? They're given by God, but they're, they're for, for this earth. It's natural life. Your blood is pumping, your heart is beating, you're breathing, thank God. The air cleared after those fires, aren't you glad? Yeah. You know, and we can see and we can hear and things like that because of, of this life in us. Then bios is the manner of life in which we can live. Amen? Hallelujah. And then uh, anastrophe is behavior, the kind of life that you live, the quality of your life. Amen? But God has called us to something higher. And that higher is Zoe. It means the eternal life or God's life. It is God's nature. It is life as God has it. Wow. Life as God has it. That which the Father has in himself. And that which the incarnate Son has in himself. It is called eternal life. Everlasting life and sometimes just life in the Word of God. No matter what manner of life or behavior you have, it won't do you any good unless you have Zoe. And that's what Jesus came to bring to you and to me. Amen? Hallelujah. When Jesus met the woman at the well, he asked her for a drink of water. 
And she said, uh, she took issue with him because not only is a man and he's a rabbi, but he's there at the well in the middle of the day. But it was a God appointment because she would come for water in the middle of the day because she was a sinner and they, everybody in her town knew she was. And so most women would go to the well in the early morning, but she couldn't be seen with them. And so she'd come in the heat of the day, but Jesus was there. He had sent his disciples into the town to get food and he had a divine appointment. And he spoke with that woman and he said, may I have a drink of water? And she said to him, you don't have a vessel. How can you do it? And then they got to talking and he said, if you knew who I was, you'd ask me for living water and it would well up in you a spring, eternal. He's trying to explain to her that all you know is these three lives and, it's, and, you're, and you're struggling. He says, you've been with this person, that person, another person, the man you're with now is not even your husband. And, and it you know, talks about, locates her, and she realizes, well, are you a prophet? And he says, no, I'm much more than a prophet. And then you met, the whole discussion goes, you know, the whole, she tried to change the subject, justify herself. You know, you Jews say we're supposed to worship God in Jerusalem, but we, you know, we, we, we're, we, we don't, this is Jacob's well, are you older than Jacob? And, and all the rest of it, this trying to get the, the, the issue off of her, and, and Jesus keeps bringing it back to her. And uh, because he's not come to condemn her, He's not come to, to, uh, to destroy her. He's not come to hurt her. He's come to give her life. Amen? And, and, and you know, read the story. If you haven't read it recently, she receives it. Her eyes are open. She sees that she's talking to the Messiah, the promise of heaven. And she receives not only forgiveness, but eternal life. And then she goes from that place shouting and dancing and telling other people, you know, what the Lord had done for her and is used of God to bring many people in her community to the Lord Jesus Christ because a life completely changed is a great testimony. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Amen. So, uh, no matter what manner of life or behavior you have, it won't do you any good unless you have Zoe. And that's what Jesus came to bring. John chapter 20. Take a look. John chapter 20 and verse 30. John chapter 20 and verse 30 and 31. It says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life, Zoe, through his name. Amen? So many other signs truly did Jesus in John chapter 20, 30 and 31, in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, there's a purpose, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have Zoe life, through his name. Jesus did many things that are not recorded in John's gospel or in any other gospel. But the things that are recorded in the gospels are recorded for a purpose. What is this purpose? That you might have, excuse me, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have Zoe through his name. The object is that we might receive eternal life. Amen? Hallelujah. The object is so that we might receive eternal life. The Bible is not a history book, even though it contains history. It's not going to answer every question that mankind can present to God. That's not its purpose. It has a very specific purpose. That's been sent by God for a specific purpose. Amen? And that specific purpose, pretty much of the whole Bible, is that we might receive eternal life by believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. So it's not going to answer, you know, what happened to the dinosaurs, and what happened to this, and what goes on, what about this, and what about the other thing. It's not a history book. It's the way of, of eternal life. I like to put it this way. It shows us that men are fallen 
and that without God we have no hope, but that God sent his son and all who believe in him can have eternal life. Amen? Pretty much that's the nutshell. And once you do that, the epistles basically are going to help teach you how you live, the rules of the kingdom, how to become a new creation, how to become something that has never existed before. Amen? Come on, my brothers and sisters. As a Christian, you need to know how to help others receive eternal life. Amen? The first step is to get them to read or hear what is written in the Gospels so that they might know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that as the Son of God, he has made spiritual life available to spiritually dead men. So one of the first steps to do to a, to a person who, who is cur who's curious, who, who might want to know more, is to help them to read the Bible. Because how faith comes by hearing, either, either by you preaching it or sharing it, or by hearing it themselves, reading it themselves. There was an expression years ago, you remember, teach a man to fish and you feed him for a day, or excuse me, uh, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, you feed him for the rest of his life. Well, give him the word of God is wonderful, but you have to teach him now how to get the word of God into them, to desire the word of God because faith will begin to, amen? And it's an abundance of, 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 of fruit, hallelujah. So John chapter three, um, John chapter 3 and verse 15 and 16. John chapter 3, 15 and 16, the famous John 3, 16, shows us that whosoever believeth in him, Jesus, should not perish, but have eternal life, that Zoe. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is that Zoe. Amen? So for people who have accepted Jesus, we can sing, I've got the life of God in me. I've got the life of God in me. See it coursing through your body. See it rooting out sickness and pain and, and, and darkness and, and confusion and, and weakness. And just see it activated in your life by the Spirit of God. Amen? I got the life of God in me. I've got the life of God in me. I've got his life, his nature, and his ability. I've got the life of God in me. And just sing it. Just go with it. Amen? Praise God. So now, why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus come? John chapter 10. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Why did Jesus come? It's a good question, isn't it? How many know he came for a purpose? A very specific purpose. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. This is that Zoe life. And that they might have it more abundantly. Amen? I said in the beginning that God doesn't do anything, you know, uh, partial or, or with some kind of a limit on it. He doesn't operate that way. Amen? He says, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. That rest is not, you know, take a short five-minute break. It is a supernatural anointing over your life that brings a peace beyond our comprehension. It's a renewing of your strength, of your spiritual strength and your natural strength. It is a, a joy welling up in your heart, part of that rivers of living water. It's a joy, unspeakable, full of glory. Amen? This is the, the rest of God is an outpouring. Amen? Because that's, that's all he is, that's all he knows. He, he, here you go, here's a, you know, here's a little package, here you go, here, here's the rest. No, we're talking about, what's it say? It says, welling up in you, hallelujah, to be a well, an outpouring, glory to God. That's how God operates. You, we need to see it that way. How is God's word, when you say, by his stripes I was healed, what does that look like? It's an anointing, it's an outpouring. 
So you see it coming upon you, washing sickness and disease, just pouring. Have you ever seen a tsunami? I've seen the tsunamis never, and thank God, you know, face to face, but I've seen them on, on uh, television shows and things like that. It seems like the water pulls away, and then, you know, onlookers, and you're thinking to yourself as you're watching this, it says a sudden tsunami. And so you see people who were curious parking their cars on the bridge, you know, and they're all standing in a big row. Wow, look at this. And next thing you know, here comes the tsunami. And not only are they washed away if they don't run fast enough, cars just get washed into the stream and get sent down river with trees and houses that are there, whatever, right? Yeah. Well, those are destructive. How many of God is not destructive? But you need to see the things of God like a good, godly tsunami. Amen? He, it's, a, it's an outpouring of strength. Amen? He told Joshua, didn't he? He says, take courage. When God says take courage, how much does he want to give you? Here's a little, here's a little goodie bag. Here's a little, you know, here's a tea bag full of, 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 you know. No, no, no. Take it and take as much as you want because there's plenty. Amen? So when you see the kindness of God, it pouring over you, the strength of God pouring over you, the health and the healing pouring over you and continue, it doesn't stop. It, it, it's ongoing. Amen? Hallelujah. Yeah. I, I said it many times before, the, like Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I've said it before. Mark it down. Psalm 91, the Psalm of Protection. I like to say they're written in the present progressive tense. Psalm 23, Psalm 91, many others, most of the Word of God, really. It's in the present progressive, which means it's relevant, it's, 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 it's on time, today, now, but it goes with you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Click, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Click, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What about tomorrow? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me, righteousness, he guides me. Amen? The same thing with the Psalm of Protection. Hallelujah. Yeah. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Click. No weapon. No weapon. Click. How about now? No weapon. The strength of God is flowing in me. What about 10 minutes from now? Still flowing. Amen? How many know it's a way of, a way of, of understanding? A way of seeing how God operates. Zoe life is not just a one-time deposit into you, amen? It's welling up in you rivers of living water. It's alive, amen? And it's welling up. If you had eyes to see, you would realize that you have no lack because he himself is a well of life in you, amen? That's why that cute little song, it's cute, but it's great. Really is great. I thought about it. And I said I can try to find it, but it's buried in one of them. Real, I'd have to go through album after album and go to the one that's dated like 1990, 1982. You with me? But how many know it's relevant and it's good? Praise God forever. So John chapter three, verse fifteen and sixteen: that whosoever believes in Him, Jesus, should not perish but have eternal life. Zoe. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? The thief comes, we brought to you this, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill and destroy. The thief cometh not. In other words, the main reason the thief has come is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Because that's the only way he knows how to do things. Amen? Why did Jesus come? Let me ask you. Did Jesus come to give us some creed to live by? Did he come to give us a code of ethics? A list of do's and don'ts to straighten us out? Did he come to start a new religion? Or to found a new church? The answer is no. Jesus came for one purpose. That we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Amen? Hallelujah. 
When Jesus spoke to the woman at the well, he answered her question. The time is coming, and now is, where true worshipers will worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? So what he was saying to her, it doesn't matter if you worship in Jerusalem. It doesn't matter if you worship, you know, uh, in Samaria. Amen? It's important that you worship, but worship in spirit and in truth. Amen? Hallelujah. And so uh, this is why he came, that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Amen? This word life is the biggest word in the gospel. This word life is the biggest word of the gospel. Man needed life because he was spiritually dead. Spiritual death which is the nature of the devil, was imparted to man at the fall of man. When Adam sinned, the eradication of this devil nature is what God has worked toward in all the ages. It was the reason why Jesus came to the earth. Jesus stated, I am come that they might have life. The only thing that will meet man's need is the nature of God. Eternal life. Nothing can take its place. That's good, isn't it? I got to read it again so you don't miss it. Jesus came for one purpose, that we might have life, that Zoe life, and that we might have it more abundantly. This word life is the biggest word of the gospel. Man needed life the greatest need of, our, life, of, of, of our, our existence. Man needed life because he was spiritually dead. Spiritual death, which is the nature of the devil, was imparted to man at the fall of man when Adam sinned. The eradication of this devil nature is what God has worked toward in all the ages. It was the reason why Jesus came to the earth. Jesus stated, I am come that they might have life. The only thing that will meet man's need is the nature of God, eternal life. Nothing can take its place. When a person receives eternal life, he receives the nature of God, the life of God into himself. This is that divine act that changes a man from the family of Satan to the family of God instantly. Amen? Hallelujah. I told you I can preach a month probably about, about of what happens on the, on the, in the moment, in the blink of an eye, when you accept Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord. Amen? It's amazing. This I'm just touching on it with, the, with this, that that Zoe life comes into you. And, 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 and when you, when he, when, when, when you, when he finds you, amen, before you accept him, you're an empty void. You're spiritually dead. There's no life in you. There's bios. Are you with me? There's suke. There's these other things by the grace of God. You're a living organism. You're, you can, you can, you can behave. You can, you can partake of, of this world, but you will not partake of heaven. You, you cannot partake of the things of the spirit of God. You're dead to it, amen? And when Satan uh, convinced Adam and Eve to, to commit high treason against God, his nature was imparted into them. And when that happened, it became the, the, process, the progression of, of life. All who were born under them have that nature in them. I can't seem to do anything about it. I'm powerless against it. And that's why we see drug addictions and alcohol addictions and, and all kinds of perversions and things trying to fill the void because we're, we're like a vacuum. We're empty. But when a person, you know, asks Jesus into their heart, he, it's, he says, my pleasure. And he fills that void. And we experience life. Amen? Amen. We're no longer dead. We're no longer aliens. We're no longer separated. Amen? We become one with God. The life of God flows into our human bodies, into our spirits. Amen? We are quickened, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Glory to God. 
And immediately you are changed from the family of Satan to the family of God. Praise God forever. And now all that's necessary is to learn. Because we're so used to, we, we know exactly how to live in the natural. Exactly. You know, somebody looks at me the wrong way. You know, anger, vengeance, you know, strife, push my button, you know, crazy stuff. And then vengeful and righteousness, not, not my righteousness, but, you know, it's like self-righteousness, selfishness, self-preservation. All this other, it all has to do with itself. And, and it's of the pit of hell. Amen? Because he, he set you free from that. Praise God forever. Amen? So let's talk finally about this divine nature. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1. Whereby? are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen? Now this word lust is that whole demonic spirit. Satan originated when he decided to challenge God. And I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. And God told him the same thing I tell you all the time. It's never about you. It's never been about you. It's a dead end path. Turn away from it before, before it takes you too far. But the Bible says pride. Amen? Pride comes before fall. And he would not. He would not repent. He would not bow. And it corrupted him. And it twisted him. And it perverted him. And now he believes lies. And he's the author of, 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 light, of, of lies. Father of lies. Jesus identified him. Amen? And, 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 and who used to be for the, created for the purpose of worshiping God now craves uh, worship. Yeah. And, and, and he who was, who was created to, to bring life now steals, kills, and destroys. And he's coerced many demons to follow in his footsteps. So he come to steal, kill, and destroy. And before Jesus came, he was having his way with mankind. But God had sent his, his word, his prophets, and all would believe on this Messiah that was promised. Amen? They could be free. They could have, have eternal life. And when Jesus, the Bible says, in the fullness of time, Jesus, God created a body for his son. The word of God became flesh, dwelt among us. Everything changed, amen? So now wherever Jesus went, he came that we might have life and life more abundantly on all who would believe on his name. And yes, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And what did he say to Peter? Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hasn't revealed that to you, but my Father has revealed that to you. Amen? And revelation knowledge, revealed knowledge of that fact, the gates of hell won't prevail against you. Because you know that you know that you know that the greater one lives in you. You know that you know that you know that the life of God lives in you. The power of God lives in you. The love of God, amen? And love conquers all. Is in you, lives in you. Amen? Click, yes, still there. Click, yes, dear. I don't, Lord, I don't feel you. Have you, have you left me? No, no, no. You have his word on it. Amen. We don't walk by sight. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith in the word of God. Lord, I haven't heard your voice in a while. Well, I'm talking. My sheep hear my voice. Amen? Just sometimes we need to, you know what? Tune out some other stuff. Amen. The volume's a little too loud. Are you with me? Come on. 
come, so come on. So anyway, let me finish this because my time is away from me. Second Peter chapter one, verse four. Amen. Whereby are given unto us exceeding, whereby are given unto us. They are your possession. Not going to be given, been given. So you own it. If you accepted Jesus, these are yours. It's in you. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. I have to say this very, very quickly. Aren't you glad it doesn't say, whereby are given unto us a promise? And a, and a real little one at that, you know? There's hope, period. Okay, no, 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 no. He says here, I love the wording, exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of God's nature, the divine nature, the Zoe life of God, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Mm -hmm. That first, what's in it for me, you've escaped that. Mm -hmm. And you realize it's not about me. It's about him, and it will always be about him. And if I will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto me. I don't have to worry about me. I don't have to even pray about me. I just need to do what he says. He's thinking about me. Like I said, Miss Karen preached it, and I, I blessed me, and I still bless me. It's one of those that keeps washing over me. When he was on the cross, you were on his mind. Oops. Amen? Yeah. I wonder where black and blues come from. I mysteriously go home. I said, where'd that black and blue come from? That's all right. Are you with me? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When you became a child of God, God imparted his own nature, eternal life to you. This life, this nature, this being, this substance of God instantly changed your spirit. You passed from spiritual death the realm of Satan, into life, which is the realm of God. That's 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. 1 John 3, 14. You pass from spiritual death, the realm of Satan, into life, which is the realm of God. You pass from the dominion of Satan into the dominion of Christ. When you received eternal life, the satanic nature passed out of you. Did you get that? When you received eternal life, the satanic nature passed out of you. The corruption from which you have escaped is spiritual death. The satanic nature, which we just covered in 2 Peter chapter 1.4. The satanic nature passed out of you. Not theoretically, but actually. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Anybody know what it says? 2 Corinthians 5.17 states, Old things are passed away. And God's nature came into you. Wow. The satanic nature passed out of you. Not theoretically, but actually. 2 Corinthians 5.17 states, Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Amazing. Hallelujah. Now, say that with me. Now, yeah. now, yeah. you are a partaker of God's divine nature. The nature of God. The Zoe life of God. Praise God forever. Say this with me. God's life is in me. God's nature is in me. God's ability is in me. God's wisdom is in me. For me to fail, God would have to fail. And God can never fail. I am a partaker of his divine nature. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me pray, but let me sing that song one more time for you. Take it with you, amen? I'm going to find it. We're going to do it one of these Sundays. But think about it. I've got the life of God in me. 
I've got the life of God in me. I've got his life, his nature, and his ability. I've got the life of God in me. I've got the strength of God in me. I've got the strength of God in me. I've got his strength, his nature, and his ability. I've got the strength of God in me. I've got the health of God in me. I've got the health of God in me. I've got his health, his nature, and his ability. I've got the health of God in me. I've got the love of God in me. I've got the love of God in me. I've got his love, his nature, and his ability. I've got the love of God in me. Sing life with me. I've got the life of God in me. I've got the life of God in me. I've got his life, his nature, and his ability. I've got the life of God in me. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. We love you. We appreciate you, sir. We thank you for all you have done for us. And we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, to walk in the light of it all. Hallelujah. Now help us to see every opportunity that we have to share this Zoe life with the people in the world around us. It's their greatest need. We thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you so very much for coming. Happy Father's Day. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.